Father, you are good. Hallelujah. You are great. Your mercy <laughs> is everlasting and your truth endures unto all generations. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day. We thank you for the night, Lord God. We thank you for all things, Lord God, that is in the heaven. Lord God, on the earth, under the earth, in the waters, Lord God, we thank you for your plan. Yes, we thank Lord. you, Lord Jesus, because we know yes, we are doing what you want us to do. Glory to your name. We yes, thank you Lord. for your protection, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are in control of all things, Father. We thank you because the enemy is under our feet feet yes, glory Lord. to your name no good things will you withhold from us we know that we walk upright in you lord jesus we cast every bit of our cares upon you because yes, you care for us lord we thank you for every promise that you've spoken lord god every word that is written in your word that applies to us yes, lord. we thank you lord god for all you have done and are doing Father, as we continue to go through this series, God, expose, reveal, yes, open Lord. our eyes, uncover, God, highlight things yes, that are Lord. darkened unto us in the name of Jesus. Right yes, now, yes. we ask you send your warring angels, fight on our behalf, Lord God, protect the message that is to go forth in the name of Jesus. We yes, take Lord. control and authority over the airways now in the name of Jesus. We tell every principality to surrender now unto the will of the Holy Spirit, unto the will of the Most High, the honor and the praise that is due unto him in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So look, we're going to do something not different, but we're going to take question and answers. Okay, so we wanted to get some questions uh, answered if there are some. We're going to be moving into our, um, not this week, but the next week we're going to be doing the boundaries. We're going to be talking about boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, everybody who ever went through the boundaries said, man, if I could have just um, had this, you know, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have stopped a lot of fighting, right? Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. So um, we're going to open it up for questions pertaining to relationship, not general uh, questions about Adam and Eve, or you can ask about Adam and Eve, but we need it to be towards. That's right. <laughs> we don't need to talk about the book of Revelation right now. We need to talk about marriage and relationship. All right, please raise your hand and we'll open it up. <laughs> Amen. Okay, no questions. Everybody got it covered. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. I'm just playing. <laughs> Y'all let it go. All right. Amen. All right. Go ahead, brother Carl. You had a question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun or if it might be covered next week, but uh, my question pertains to um, what if, let's just say, both parties get married unsaved and then during marriage, one um, of the people get saved while the other still remains unsaved. What or what's your take on, because uh, obviously I'm pretty sure there would be some type of conflict there uh, in regards to, you know, following Jesus and, you know, the other person might do something different in right. regards to a worldly aspect. But what's your take on how the believer is supposed to, you know, like maybe behave or how are they supposed to coexist with the unbeliever since they are both got married unsaved, but one of them decided to get saved while being married? Um, well, the Bible talks about that. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, if you, if you are, you, know, a, you have an unbelieving spouse, it says that if your spouse is willing to dwell with you, then just dwell with them. You know, the, the problem that usually happens is when people try to be super spiritual, right. where they try to be, just be a good wife, a good husband, <laughs> be nice. You can speak in tongues and be evil. You ever seen somebody walk around and, say, and then cuss you out basically without saying any curse words? I'm holy and sanctified, but you mean and nasty. And that's ugly. Don't nobody want to be married to that. Jesus don't even want to be around that, right? So be nice to one another. Be kind to one another. And the scripture says that if you're, if the unbelieving spouse is willing to dwell with them, then they're they're okay. You can you can you can do that, right? But if that unbelieving spouse leaves you, 
Paul said a brother or sister is not healed to that. You didn't do anything to, to cause them. You didn't put them away. Okay? So just be nice and pray for them. Pray that they get saved too. Right? Yeah. Let me add to that too. I think... Um... <clears throat> And then this is not for you, Brother Carl, but I think a lot of times people are looking for an out. Um, and it's always because we're talking about the biblical God's intended purpose, right? Um, we're talking about getting and staying married. We always got to go back to the origin. Now, even in Matthew, how the Pharisees came to, to, to him to try to, to Jesus to try to kind of get him to, to trip up. They were asking about divorce, but God never even really wanted them to have divorce. He didn't mm -hmm. want divorce as an option. And he said, because their, their hearts were hard, did he give them that way out? So I know a lot of times- That was in the Old Testament. Yeah, but he in the New Testament is where it's referenced, right? right. So the thing with getting married that's why it's critical that we we have to know how to get along <laughs> and how to to coexist with someone because it said he, he you know he talked about and said and you know you've heard it said in the beginning that male and female were created that's why he's got to leave his mom cleave to his wife and they become one it didn't say that only the believers become one that's marriage period and so that's why we're stressing, okay, when you decide to get married, make sure it's God that sent them. And I know your example was too unsafe, bro, Carl. So we're not talking about you, but we just wanted to give a little more, you know, a little more substance to that. But that's why it's crucial. Divorce is, has never been God's desire, never right. been his plan, never been something that he wanted to give to anyone. Cause you'll have you you won't have you won't have one person. Yeah. You'll you think it's one, but you're you're half. Mm -hmm. Before a Adam and Eve were both in Him, right? It was just Him. He was mankind, mm -hmm. and God said it's not good for Him to be alone. We need to, and He's splitting essentially. He took the woman out of His rear. I was just uh, I was just uh, looking at this guy posted this. It's a post that he made of something I said along. I don't even remember saying it. It was when we were in Japan and I was probably 23 years old. And he said, man, I remember hearing John Guy say that Adam in the garden gave up his rib to get his bride. And Jesus on the cross was speared in his ribs for his new bride. Mm -hmm. He said, and that's a new bride. I was like, ooh, that was, I said, I said that. I was like, that sounds good. <laughs> but both of them required hard, hardship. Right. One had to be put under lose his rib the other one had to lose his life you have mm -hmm. to give up for your wife that'll preach brothers yeah so hopefully that answered your question absolutely yeah so so that's yeah. why if they don't want to leave you you don't just put them away <laughs> right yeah because no, in no, god's not eyes to me in oh yeah no we're n that's why yeah. i said i'm not talking about right you, you don't want to get but... your your wife be looking like what you trying to say <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> All right, we're going to take the next question. I think it's Sister Alexis. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I guess I had two questions. My first question, or it's not a question, it's a statement, but I guess it's a question. Like, oh, yeah, I can make it a question. What are some, um, like, conflict resolutions, like, um, and when I ask that, or conflict strategies, when I ask that, um, like, what are some strategies to use when both parties are upset? Or, like, one person may be stream extremely upset about, about um, a topic or something where they're not able to handle it well. Like, you know, respond well, or they may not respond well. So, like, some conflict strategies, like, before you get to the point of, either no return or the point of, um, you know, it's a heated argument. Yeah. Go ahead. That's a good, um, that's a good question. One thing I like to do, this is something that Apostle <laughs> and I have always, he's not just my husband. 
he's also my brother in Christ, right? When I always take that approach, me personally, both of us actually, it it reminds me of how, you know, how I should handle him and how I should deal with him. One, I got to honor and respect him, right? Because he's the head. However, when that, if, if you flip it and put that same scenario at work, at school, somewhere else, we will automatically know how to control ourselves. But for some reason, with the person that is closest to us, mm. we feel more at leisure to just let it rip, right? But we still have to learn how to control those emotions or else the emotions will control us. So sometimes what I tend to do is I will just take a deep breath and pause before I respond. It's the same thing they tend to tell you at work before when you getting ready to just go at that, e respond to that email. In and all say, caps. <laughs> and they'll tell you, <laughs> maybe you should wait and respond to that tomorrow or you know later on and they'll give it some hours. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know the same thing we tell kids? No, okay, you need a time out. Take a mental time out. Because yeah. a lot of times it's just the where all of our emotions are elevated and up here that we feel we have to go. We have to get our point across. But we have to just step back and just pause and, and just that's that's my that's my method. Maybe that doesn't work for everyone. And I don't care if it seems like he's trying to run over me and, you know, someone be like, well, you just let him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to let him yell and be his own crazy self if that's what he's doing. Bang, bang. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not going to sit up there and meet, match his energy. I'm just not. Because then that's how uh, pe things get swung, right? When people, stuff gets broke, holes get punched. Uh, that's just how things In the wall. Happen. Right. That's right, how things happen. Her, right? I'm not saying this happened. Has, is happening with us or has. We've got there before. What, has, we've but... gotten that upset where I'm like, wait a minute, it's not even this serious. Why? 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 So that's that's my that's my take. What I learned from I learned from that. Uh, well, if you you can't you can't just go off on people that like she said at your job. You know why we don't do that? Because we don't want to lose that money. Mm -hmm. And why would I speak to my wife? We most people think you're my wife or you're my husband, you're my spouse, so I should be able to talk to you like this when it's the actual opposite. Mm -hmm. Why would I talk to another woman better than I talk to my wife? Right. Why would I talk to, to my spouse horribly? That's what causes a lot of spouses not to want to be at church. Right. Why would you oh, talk hey, so uh, kind and sweet and apostle, honorable and respectful you. to your pastor? Oh, apostle. But at home, you acting real <laughs> to you, your husband. You, you know? cuss me out and then you just... That's why Bishop Smith used to always say, don't be staying around here after Bible class talking about I was with Bishop. No, you wasn't. I dismissed at 730. You stayed around here. And when he did that, a lot of those husbands came and said, hey, how you doing, man? I just want to shake your hand. And a lot of those guys ended up giving, getting saved, giving their life to Christ, getting involved. Because he was like, no, you're not going to speak to your husband or your wife right. horribly and then honor the leadership. That's your number one leadership. That's right. It's the truth. Um, so that that's one way. To, what I do is I do similar to her. I learned from her. This is what I do. I've told anybody I've ever counseled what I do. It's funny, but this is exactly what I do. When I say something and I feel like, or she says something and I feel like it's going to the roof and I'm I'm a type A <laughs> alpha personality. I always want the smoke, as the kids say. I always want the conflict. What I do is I say, one, 1,000, in my brain, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. And then I sing this old song that says, I think I better let it go. <laughs> I do it so I make myself laugh so I won't get mad. I say, love TKO. Do, do, do. And she's walking out. What is he crazy? He crazy. Yes, I am. I'm crazy. I'd rather be crazy in my brain than to act crazy on my wife. And it ruins our testimony. Okay? Yeah. So I know we got, uh, I'm a, hopefully that answered your question, Sister Alexis. We're going to go to Elder Larkins. And I think after that, Brother Ducati. So go ahead, uh, 
elder? Uh, Apostle, I had a question concerning marriage, and it's uh, it's one of those strange situations that I know somebody's in, but it has to do with marriage. They was married, they still is married, but they couldn't get along together. All right. So each one of them separated, but they still married, and they just come together for the flesh part of God. So. You know, I just want to know what you think your insight would be on that. I know they're still married and could be saved, but they don't dwell together, but they come together. Wow, that, you know, that's something that used to happen so much back in the day. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll find someone had a house down here and they lived over here. <laughs> then you also find our granddaddy had another woman because he <laughs> Yes. And grandma um, had another man. Go ahead. Well, I'm I know that would be what we call legalistic, right? Because legally they are still correct in God's eyes, but are they really? Because if they can't um reside in the same <laughs> place how is he really leading you know how is he really the the head over the home when the home is divided right so i always kind of go back to the text i know that you know it also says that we know we're not supposed to have kids but that um you know if if that isn't happening then prayers can be hindered right so you say, say that. that is happening but are they really one? Because even the scripture says, when God puts them together, no man can, can separate them. So, but they're separated, you see? So is he really ruling his house well? Is he the head of the home when there's two homes involved? So and that's is she submitted always, to him? Right, and is she submitted to him? That's what usually get, can't get along is. Yeah. Somebody can't submit and, or somebody don't want to lead. Yeah. It's all I'm telling you. If you dig deep, you and, and when it's in and if it's an extreme case, it's a little bit of both. Mm hmm Amen. That's the truth. Now that's 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 the unpopular truth, but it is still the truth. And you can't be one living in two separate places. Cause you're gonna Not automatically do things your own way. You know, right? Absolutely. So it's it's imperative. I would say that um, that's not God's will because the mm -hmm. church, the the relationship between Christ and the church, is the relationship of marriage. So do, it's like would would Jesus be like, oh, I'm never coming to visit y'all at church? <laughs> when we come together, the Lord is like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to be around you. And then the flip side. Right. Us as believers, it says we know we pass from death to life because we love, love the, the brethren. brethren. When you got someone who says they saved and they never, ever want to go to church and be around the believers. Check your birth certificate. I mean, we can't, <laughs> we can't say you're not saved, but I'm like, okay, that's not a trait and a characteristic of a believer, you know? Right. How you going to want to be in heaven for all eternity around the Lord and you don't want to be with them at church? And it's the same thing. You, you, If you're not going to be with your spouse, then that means you have a problem and that's you need to get it addressed. That's very important. It's a cancer. It's a cancer. It really is. And God is not pleased. Yeah, not to mention it, it's a, it's a door for the enemy, right? Right. To come in. Oh, I noticed you live by yourself. Right. You all right? You need somebody to come do some handy work for you. Mm, that's how you get you in know? trouble. <laughs> yard worker had you uh, at the divorce court. <laughs> come and do yard work. And next you know, you didn't, you spend the night, you live there, you <laughs> messed up. So we just pray for them and tell them the advice would be figure it out. Yeah. I think a lot of times, and I'm going to go to the next person, but with, with marriage, it takes thick skin. Mm. Yes. You, if you got thin skin... You in the wrong gang. You got to be, you got to toughen up. You got to pull your britches up and, and, and be a man or be a woman and say, oh, you getting on my nerves. What movie are we watching tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times I've done that and said, oh, I can't stand you. You want to watch which episode of of uh, The Godfather of Harlem you want to watch tonight? Do you want to, right? Because we, we got it. We going to fix this. So we might as well laugh a little bit 
And then tomorrow, we, when we're cool, we'll talk. Amen. All right, we're going to go to Brother, Brother Ducati. Ducati, and then we'll go to um, Minister Larkins. Are you, are you there, brother? Can y'all hear me? Yes. All right. I got two questions. Okay. When you at eyes with your spouse, why are your prayers hindered? And also, what prayers are you allowed to pray, um, you know, that, that, that won't be hindered? Like, you, if you still want to pray for people or pray over yourself, what... What can I pray while my prayers are being hindered? So the scripture, pull, if you can pull that up real quick, we're gonna, I'm going to show it to you and then uh, we'll go from there. You're going to have to look for it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so uh, one of the reasons why is because when the Bible says that we are representations of Christ and the church, he is not playing so the scripture says, likewise, this is 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, talking about your wife, according to knowledge, according to what you know about her. That's very critical. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, mm -hmm. that your prayers be not hindered mm -hmm. so the scripture even talks about to the woman right before that in verse six it says that the woman even as sarah obeyed abraham up oh, they go to cuss word that people the women don't like <laughs> he didn't just say submit he says sarah obeyed mm -hmm. that's why ladies don't say yeah i'll marry you because you got to obey that joker <laughs> Yeah. And fellas, don't say, baby, will you marry me? You my, you're the sun, the moon, the stars, and the mountains. Girl, I love you. You know all the songs they get. You, you're the first, you're my last, my everything. Blah, blah, blah. Is she the weaker vessel or is she cuckoo for cocoa? Be mm -hmm. careful because the Lord is not going to trip either way. He's going to say, that's the one you selected. Correct. So you got to dwell with them according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. That part is kind of hard. And ladies, he says, Sarah obeyed. Abraham calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well and you are not afraid with any any amazement, and meaning that you're not, uh, and that word afraid is like alarmed or scared mm. that you're not afraid of of taking on that that task, right? So, what with it when it pertains to your question? Get it right with your wife. So what the Lord says is this. If you're going to come to me, you need to get it right. Just like before you take communion. Can you turn that down, babe? Get it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our light just went crazy. So it says if you're going to get it right with me and take communion, it says that you have to go and get it right with your brother first. Or if you're going to give a gift. If you're going to sow a seed, you have to give, you have to get it right with your brother or sister first, then come back and you can give your gift. So the easiest way to stop hindering your prayers is to go and get with thine own wifest and husbandest <laughs> and then get it rightest and then say, well, wait a minute, I'm still mad. The Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly, but she got on my nerves. It ain't going to be the last. <laughs> yeah. So look at this. Let me get y'all this real quick. So look, and you can pray after that. Get it right with them. Forgive me and forgive them. And then go back and say, okay, Lord, we failed this time. But as long as we fail forward, that's the key. Now, where you're not going to work is if you're going to try to not get it right with your spouse and then go and talk to the Lord. He's going to be like, man, you need to get it right with her. Because if you ain't right with her or if you're not right with him, you ain't right with me. Yeah. That's how God views it. So he's like, get it right with your spouse and then do it. Now watch this, guys. This takes a commitment to one another. Do y'all hear me? Because sometimes you don't want to get it right. And some people are so bullheaded, they just won't. And the Lord says, okay, <laughs> proceed at thy own risk. But if you say, ugh, all right, I got to figure you out. 
That means I gotta watch you. I gotta observe you. You gotta observe me. You gotta follow my lead. Mm -hmm. Ladies, let me tell you this. Do you know that there's only one person that the president has to obey? One group of people. You know who that is? The American people. Wrong. The Congress. You know that ain't true. <laughs> Trump and them ain't never listened to the Congress. Right? Who, who, who does it have to listen to? Secret the Secret Service. Service. Mm -hmm. Because they're required, they're, they're responsible for his protection. Yeah. So he could be in the middle of a meeting and a person who's no name could say, Sir, we have to go now. Huh? Get up. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Because they are hearing things that he doesn't hear. Ladies, when we take over as the, the pastor of our home, you are directly my, she is my responsibility. I tell the dog this all the time, and I don't think she can hear, but she better know. If somebody busts in his house, the last person that should be injured is her and my mom and her, even above my mother. As hard as that is, yeah. she's above my mom, right? She's above me. It's my responsibility. If if everybody's dead, everybody needs to be dead. I can't, I'm not surviving. I'm going out attempting to protect. And th this is where all the stuff walk, the male and walking on the side of the street. The reason the men open the door is not because you're a princess. He's protecting and ensuring you get into the car safely, right? All of that stuff came from that, right? That's all came from that. It stems from this is responsible. He is responsible for your protection, your provision, the whole nine yards. If he's responsible for all of that, you better obey him. Don't be trying to tell him, I don't care what you say. We didn't get your own self in the car. <laughs> when they bust in, he go to gun, baby, go downstairs, and lean and shoot a little bit to the left if you pull the trigger too hard. Uh uh, I need a real man. Well, if you want a real man, let him be a real man. Don't fight and destroy the blessing God gave you. Amen. Yeah. On the flip side, as a dwelling with your wife, according to knowledge, you're supposed to observe her and know how to, as the leader, utilize her to her fullest potential. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I got to know that my wife is different than your wife, than his wife, than his wife. She's different. So I'm not going to come in and try to subject her and push her down. No, I'm going to make it where she's flourishing and say, baby, flourish. Do everything you got to do. But right here is a boundary. Right here is a boundary. Do whatever you do. <laughs> go for what you know. But this is, if you go outside of this, I can't protect you. Stay within these lines. Go and do what you need to do. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not micromanaging. I'm not on her. You need to do this. You weak. You weak. No, 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 no. I'm just letting her flourish. That's when you start winning. When you start observing and say, I'm not even going to talk to her about that. That's a fight. I'm going to wait and talk to her at this point mm -hmm. and then go from there. So, I'm yeah, sorry, baby, and I went I, overboard. And I would, you know, to answer your question, uh, Brother Ducati, <clears throat> God doesn't see difference in prayers when it comes to that. Because you said, is there a prayer we can pray? And I think what Minister Richard is saying is when you repent. Because yes, one, when we're praying with someone else, we can't <laughs> repent on their behalf. Right. So there's not a certain prayer that won't be hindered or will be hindered unless <laughs> you are praying that you repent for whatever is going on. OK, that's it's real. God doesn't see. I think that's what we all have to realize. God doesn't see him or her. He sees one. Now, I know that in the <laughs> end, when we you know, when we make our time in glory and we're in eternity, we stand before God on our own, yes. But when we're down on earth and we chose to join with another person, you are one. In God's eyes. In God's eyes with that person. I encourage everybody to read this um, this chapter of 1 Peter, third chapter. Because it goes, it, after what we were just talking about, about our prayers not being hindered, it says, <laughs> be of one mind, having right. compassion on another. Talk to each other with love as brethren. That's kind of what we were talking right, about before. Christian brothers, sisters. Yeah. Um, so there's not, you know, something specific you can pray for or can't pray for. This part is hindered, but you can do that. You are one. 
And this is a relationship and an institution and a covenant that we established with another person and God. Okay. And just like, just like when you say, when you get saved mm -hmm. and you say, father, I believe that you raised your son, Jesus from the dead. I confess you as my mm -hmm. Lord. That moment you join, you are in the body of Christ. You are married to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not tomorrow. The next day I got to get saved. You're saved. As soon as you do those vows before the Lord, mm -hmm. he says one, it is no longer two. Now you have to learn to become and function as one. But in his eyesight, you just as married as a person has been married 85 years. That yeah. moment. And that's the realization of it. That's why one of the things it says in the thing, it says that marriage is not when you are reading the, 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 the preachers performing it. Marriage is an institution instituted by God mm -hmm. that is not to be entered into ill-advisedly or lightheartedly, but reverently in the fear of God. They try to do the new ones. They don't want to say that. I still do the old school and <laughs> say, look, you, that's why they even ask one more time. Is there anybody <laughs> who can find just cause why these jokers should die? <laughs> right. And then so speak now, ever hold your peace. And, and then there you go. But. It's doable, though. The more you guys work at it, the better it'll get. Okay, so I'm going to go to Minister Deborah Larkins. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hi. I was just going to add on because you guys pretty much said it, you know, after that, which was good. And I was just adding on to uh, some of the questions they was asking about strategies and also uh, – my husband was talking about a couple and I was thinking like, you know, communication to me is key, you know, because when you go into bed and you're getting mad and don't talk for two or three days, you know, and just letting stuff fester and build, that is not good. So like you say, we have to, two have to become one and it's a lot of work at becoming one. It's not easy. You know, some that have been married for 20 years, 40 years. It's not easy, but it's work, constant work constant work because they're their own person and we're our own person yeah. but we got to come together sometime or another communication is key because okay. even if you go to bed mad and you still don't have an understanding of the situation still angry still nothing is solved that's true you're just gonna go on and on until you learn how to come together like you say as one and talk about it that's right absolutely and it becomes yeah. beautiful too doesn't it mm -hmm. it does it seems crazy mm -hmm. you just got to weather the storm and then once you weather the storm, you're like, I actually like this. It's, it's yeah. all right. I am crazy. And you are too. <laughs> we crazy together. And now they figured out your brand of crazy. I'm not trying to get a brand new brand of crazy and got to learn somebody all over again. I know she how she like her nachos when we go to the movies. She ain't want nothing else. Nachos and some M&Ms. And she good, right? I'm not trying to what you want, sweetie. Oh, Lord, I don't know. She got an attitude. Uh-uh, I'd just rather have her regular attitudes. I'm used to them. Right. <laughs> We've grown so much, haven't we? Back in the day, that would have yeah. been a fight later on. We have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're right. Communication is absolutely the key. It's so important because, you know, the, a lot of, of time people don't want to feel like they just hold on to grudges because they want to feel like, well, I'm not giving in first. We're not little kids. We're adults, you know. Somebody have to give in, you know, we, we want to be together and to the death do us part, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's good, um, Minister Larkins, because I think you mm -hmm. just said something that is really key. You say we're not little kids, we're adults. Mm -hmm. I've find and I've found and I've learned that a lot of adults don't know how to communicate. It's hard. Yeah. And yeah. you got it. Yeah. You got to. We got to know how to put our pride aside. Thank and you. learn Thank how you. to just deal with things. Sometimes it's just talking. It's mm -hmm. just talking. Um, so cool. And we yeah. and and there's stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I I know people hate hearing this, but there's stuff out there to help. <laughs> I really mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest with all of you, and mm -hmm. I've never shared this with anyone that mm -hmm. I probably really have just become comfortable with sharing everything with the apostle like mm -hmm. maybe a year yeah right um mm -hmm. i didn't deal with conflict like that growing up you know i didn't have nobody to talk to i didn't see communication growing up i saw arguing mm -hmm. i saw fighting 
You know, I saw tearing uh, one side down. I saw the other side running to a corner. I saw all of that growing up, mm -hmm. but I didn't learn communication. And then I didn't have any siblings to really just talk to about what was going mm -hmm. on, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I just learned to just keep it in, like you said, Minister mm -hmm. Larkins, and just hold stuff, hold a grudge, and just just go mm -hmm. on about my life with it. But that is mm -hmm. so unhealthy. Yes. And so now I find myself mm -hmm. just saying stuff. <laughs> She yeah. tell me and right Apostle's me. like, oh. I was like, yeah, I know, but I still need to be able to say this, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank That's you. That's right. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about, the boundaries. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Even if they get angry, you know, that's what I, I've learned. You just have to talk about it. You know, we can't hold it in because that yeah. makes things work. And, mm -hmm. and to be able to listen to him. Because I would be the shutdown person. Be like, oh, here we go again. And I'm going to say something. Oh, so you shutting down? <laughs> You shutting down and just increase and increase. And it's like, this is not working, bro. It's not working. Because I'm like, oh, we're going to talk about this. Right. And I was like, she ain't talking. I'm tired of this. <laughs> and just run off and, whoa, boo, boo. Right? That's just me. But you can't do that. I had to figure out, man, you are literally setting yourself back year after year. Just <laughs> one year, two year, three year, four year. <laughs> just, so I had to stop that. Let me give you an example of bad communication. And we'll go to Sister Gwen, right? Here's bad communication. I need to talk to my wife because she made me mad because when she went up to get a Capri Sun, she ain't give me one. It sounds minor, but don't play about them Capri Suns in our house, right? So anyway, so she going to get a Capri Sun. Y'all see my face? This is me. When she comes back to the movie with Capri Sun and some popcorn, <laughs> right? I'm like, here's the right way. Sweetie, did they have any more in there? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, she be an honorary today, but I'm not saying it. So I said, you know what? I'll get one. That one looks like you drank it already. I'll get you another one. Mm -hmm. You know why I'm doing that? Because the Bible says when you do good to those that's being a little spiteful, you heap <laughs> heaps of coal on her head. Or in my situation, multiple Capri Suns poured on her head in the, in the spirit. So I go and get the Capri Suns. Here you go, sweetie. Thank you. All right. Don't say nothing about it and just keep it moving. Don't get mad. Nothing. Here's the wrong way to do it. So why would you go and get <laughs> a Capri Sun and not get one for me? I didn't think you wanted one. Y'all see the look? <laughs> well, I did want one. You see me over here at Parch? I've been at work all day. You notice I nodded and went into other stuff. I had to work all day when I came home. It ain't like I was going to get a good meal, got popcorn, Capri Sun. <laughs> I can't get a Capri that's the wrong way to do it. Who wouldn't argue with me for talking like that? I would argue with myself, like, bro, who are you talking to like that over? Oh, 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 take these stupid Capri Suns, <laughs> right? And get, I come in and just throw the box in there, just drink them all, right? Now, I'm using something small. It's usually something that is near and dear to your heart for real, right? Right? Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. same principle applies. Speak to them like how you would want someone to not offend you. And if you know them, which we all do when you're married or even dating, you'll know them. You'll figure out if I say this, he's going to get mad. If I say this, she's going to get horribly mad. Just avoid those words and try to be seasoned. Are there going to be times you're going to argue? Yeah, you're human. But as you, yeah. when you do that, you make your arguments less frequent. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you got to work on after that is how to reduce the time of angry after the argument mm -hmm. and that's when you realize oh this is what marriage is about we can reduce that and now we start having fun with it because we know how far to and that's when it's beautiful i can like some of these things i'm saying could have made her mad right but i know mm -hmm. if i say one particular thing oh i'm gonna hear about that after <laughs> right and i and now i know that line i know that boundary and i just put it mm -hmm. on myself and there you go. When you marry a new married, it's gonna you're gonna jump over it all the time. Yeah, and there's ton there's there's so many rabbit holes we can go down with this same scenario. Because me, once upon a time, most people that know me know I I'm just I'm a giver, giver. I'm generous, I'm caring. I'm not all the way. But <laughs> I could have come upstairs and be like, I I thought about you. Here's your Capri Sun because 
I know you wouldn't think about me when you went down there, you know? And just take it and drop it on the floor, boom, and, and walk out. And that could have been true in the beginning. Because he, he wouldn't, that's not, I'm not going to say a given is not apostle's nature. He is, he is a focused person. I'm going to say that, right? Mm -hmm. So when he's thinking about something, sometimes the other thoughts don't <laughs> come to him. That's just, that's nature and that's him. And I don't see anything wrong with that. But now I'm like, you know what? Let me just grab another one in case he wants it. You see, see how I change me? I can't folk, I can't worry about him and how he's gonna respond and what he's gonna say and what he's gonna do. Let me just bring up two Capri Suns. What's the worst that can happen? I, I, no one drinks it. And that changed me, y'all. And I put it back down in the fridge. Her doing like that, that changed me. When I go to the store, what am I coming back with? Bunions and what? M and M's. It's for her. Here you go, baby. I'll be like, I get to get these. Yeah. She be like, oh, thank you. I'll be like, like a little dog. And she pat my head. Yeah. I walk and off. So it's all and I'm about happy what about we it. Started with saying, your bucket. Right. You control what you can control, which right. is you. That's it. So we got Sister Gwen, and then we got Elder Guy. And then we got a question for y'all, maybe. No, I don't know if we got time. Okay, go ahead. Hey everybody, so my question is, what if you have two believers and they don't work it out, they can't work it out? What, what would be next for them or how, is God, how does God look at them? Because if they're, they know what to do, but they just can't work it out, you know, they go back and forth, try to work, it, it just don't work out. What does what does God say about that? What does I think I know, but I I want I need to know what what God does. Just a question. Yeah, you know that's a good question because it happens so much. It's so funny with all the statistics out there. Unfortunately, believers are not exempt. It's the same as the world. You know? A little higher than the world's the worst statistics. And ultimately, we know who our God is. He's a loving, forgiving, forgiving Father. Merciful for God. And if that just can't be worked out, you know, he knows the true, the true intent of our hearts. And he knows if someone has tried to work it out or not. Yes, he's a forgiving father. And if we repent and ask for forgiveness, he's going to forgive us. Right. I, I, I'm not saying it's anyone here, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that stance, you know, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. That grace may abound, God forbid. No, and meaning, should we make these decisions knowing, okay, God is going to forgive us? No, absolutely not, because he knows our heart. He sees through it. He sees it. Well, we know, and that's the scenario that you brought up, Sister Gwen, we are, we, he is a loving, forgiving father. If our heart has repented and we have asked him for his forgiveness, He'll forgive us. Yeah, yeah, he'll forgive us. I agree. And let me say this too. And he can tell when you if you're trying to trick him. Like I'm gonna use the scripture and get around it. Then mm -hmm. he's gonna be like, up. Oh, you can't. You are, you are not smarter than God. I'm not. You can't even trick me. Right. And I'm right here from the east side of Detroit. I know you can't trick God. He knows everything. But w watch this. Look, if you if people are if you're here today, the easiest way, especially for single people, if you want to work on yourself yeah work on the things that the bible says you are to do in a marriage i mean like really work on it like you already have a spouse a husband or a wife there if you do that you know what will happen you will start exuding those traits in your everyday life mm. and it will attract for the ladies it will attract the man that is looking for that you attract what you put out, I don't care what nobody say. They can say whatever they want. What you put out, if that's what you're getting, the type of dudes that's coming up, that's, what's, <laughs> that's what you're putting out. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. It kind of sucks. And for dudes, the men that are saved, that are looking for that, like when I was looking for a wife, I went to the Navy to find my wife, literally to find my wife. When I was meeting girls, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Nope. We could go on a date. We could talk. Nope. Nope. 
How do you know? Because I'm looking for the traits, the traits, because she can't do that for me because she's not my wife, but the traits of a wife that's in the scripture. Yeah. And when I saw my wife, I was like, when I saw, look, I said my wife, when I saw her, I said, oh, she's a wife waiting to be married. And then it was easy. It was, it was, I was like, oh, I'm getting ready to do it. And let me say this too, ladies, for the fellas, when we are ready to marry you, we marry you. <laughs> if a dude's saying, uh, he ain't ready. That's a fact. Right? And there's something that you might, a trait you might be putting out that's making him say it. Because just think about it. When we ready to go to the store, we'd be like, I'll be back, man. Where are you going? To the store. <laughs> I go to the store. If I'm ready to be married, if I know this is the one, so you have to not try to fix your the dude. You have to say, wait a minute. I need to work on some stuff. Am I pleasant to be around? Fellas, am I a leader? Is she leading me everywhere I'm going? Maybe she don't want to say yes. Because she has to make all the decisions. That is my wife. When we first got married, I, I thank God for this because I was kind of the type where I would just I saw my father and mother married when he was sick. So she was making a lot of the decisions. He was sick. Right. I didn't I, I don't remember him being healthy, healthy. Right? He got sick when I was six. So I was just like, OK, when I get married, she'll just handle all that stuff. <laughs> my wife was looking at me like. I don't know who you think this is. I'm not married guy. I'm not finna do all of this. You need to make some decisions. And I started looking and saying, oh, she right. I'm out here looking very weak. I'm not, I'm not giving her the warm and fuzzy of security in that. And now she has to kind of like say, okay, babe, you don't have to make all of them. Because I'm like, I'm, I make them, baby. Let's go. So those are some of the things that I wanted to say to you, Sister Gwen, because if it doesn't work out, now what? I got to now work on me. And it's not what, what a lot of people think. Oh, if it's for the dude, I will say, hey, man, you need to go, probably go to college, get some, get some, get yourself stable financially, start working on yourself spiritually, working on yourself. For the ladies, I'm saying you can go and do those other things, but men don't look at none of that. He don't care about your degree. It's good to have a degree, but he's not going to marry you because of that. You have, he has to see like, wow, when I look at her, I see that she's going to make make it peaceful for me she's going to be there she's going to have my back she's not going to go around and be with other men right those type of things and give, give me give you an example claire huxtable i always use her it was that's a fake i'm not talking about felicia Rashad. i'm saying claire huxtable when you saw her she would be like do you want some coffee i no, but she was accomplished right but she was classy you never saw her in nothing Ugh, right she just felt class when I saw that in my wife, I said, I was like, oh, she's beautiful. She's pretty. There's a million pretty girls. But when I looked, I said, oh, she's classy. She's not loud and an obnoxious. Oh, let me look. Let me look again. Oh, she didn't mess around and got saved. Oh, come on, Jesus. Give me <laughs> and next you know, within six months. Come on, boo. All right, we're going to shut up on that one. That's our last little point. <laughs> no, yeah, that's good, Apostle. I wanted I'm talking to just, too much. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're okay. I wanted to share that Apostle said something that was really key. He said he went to the Navy for his wife, right, to find his wife. And we, would, we need to stress that that was by direction of the Lord. Facts. So when he says, work on yourself, spiritually don't just go <laughs> right don't just go out looking for okay this was by direction of god god <laughs> showed him his next steps in life and for him it ended up being the navy and in that being in the navy he was going to find his wife so that's what apostle is saying by work on yourself you know get closer to God. It's kind of what we said in the very beginning, right? We were working on ourselves and then God Put us joined through. us together. Something that a lot of people overlook. I taught this one time um, 
maybe during like, you know, a Mother's Day time or something, but is the Proverbs 31 woman. Hmm. A lot of times we like to ascribe that, those traits and characteristics to every woman. No. And yes and no, because it was specifically speaking wife. of a wife. Okay. Now the thing, remember that starts off by saying it was a word of prophecy from King, uh, King Solomon's mother to him. And so she was giving him what to look for in a wife. Okay, so that's very, very key. You can we can always relate back to Proverbs 31, but know that when you think about we like to think about that total woman and that total package, right? As she does all this, yeah, but she's also it's that is referencing to someone that is a wife. And so if you want to just know some of the characteristics and some of the traits. Her husband calls her blessed. Her mm. kids do. She she comes. She takes care of her house. She has business, right? Yep. She knows how to um, run those that work for her. She knows how to rule well. She still can submit to her husband and be in authority at the same time. So, you know, that's just something we always like to share. You just, just work on who you are as a woman of God and if you are looking to be married, the Lord will bring them. Let me tell you this too. Let me give you this last little piece and then we're going to talk about marriage for the single folks. If you give your single mate, not mate, but single person you're dating, everything as if you're married, you're sabotaging your marriage. And I'm not talking about, you know, Mama, and granny, and them, you in there shacking up. I'm not talking about that. I mean, that's a bad thing, too. But what I'm talking about is you they are not your spouse. God does not see you guys getting closer. There is it's either two or one. Right. <laughs> that's it. God is not, He's not playing around with that. Oh, but God, see, look, I've given you all these years. Why are you why? No, you're not. You you are a brother and sister in Christ. If you do that, you're sabotaging, especially ladies. Let me tell you that because we as men will trick you. Come on, girl. Come on now. Nah. I got to, if I go to get a car, you know, we, I got to test drive the car saying all that stupid stuff. Do not fall for that joker because why is he going to put a ring on you if he getting everything now? Mm -hmm. Men are practical. We are practical. You, we can be in love, but when we in love, it's a little sinister. Right. So be careful with our love. But with women, you all be like, oh, my God, he's just a good and he's handsome. He's, he's the exact same height I've been praying for. If he come in talking, yeah, 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 I understand. But can we. Don't do it. He, he will. You will literally put a pause in marriage. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. We will. We will look at it and say, man. Nah. I'm good. And then when you meet the man that God gave you or the woman that God gave you, what will happen is you will be injured from your past relationship. This will cause many people to not get married. They're wounded. And when you look at the other person, you're expecting them to do what the last one did. And they might not be that. All right. So that and that requires a special mate to let you heal while still trying to be become one. It's already hard enough becoming one, mm -hmm. let alone trying to now heal a wound that you could have avoided by saying, no, these are the standards of the word of God. And this is how I'm moving. Now for married folks, we're finished, but what we're gonna do this next session, I want you to be here. Elder had a question, elder guy. Okay, I'm gonna go to elder right after this. But in our next session, what we're gonna talk about is the boundaries, okay? Mm -hmm. Now look, the boundaries are for marriage, but if you, you can practice them now and rehearse it and practice it, all right? Go ahead, mother. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. You got to unmute yourself. This is our last question. I really kind of wanted to make a comment and wanted you to uh, address it. Um, maybe what was a, I, I, this came to mind when you were discussing the little drinks 
you know, she go and get some for her. <laughs> Capri Sun. For you. But often the reason that happens is because you didn't study your mate because they came from a different background. And if, if they don't know what, if they don't see anything offensive about that, right. but you, because maybe in your house, the mama always brought the drink to the fella, you know, in her house, the mama didn't bring the drink to the fella right. and we can get upset about some things that re really, we just need to study the mate. I, I think. Right. You're absolutely. Absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Don't should, don't say what somebody should do if you never told them to do right. right you gotta you can't well you he should already know or she should know no that ain't true well it's just right <laughs> really where does it say that in the bible <laughs> thou shalt us bring us a capri sun as many as times as, as you go us to this kitchen it ain't in a book just be courteous one to another and watch mm -hmm. this there are some people who come from backgrounds that could be like i can get up and get my own drink Mm -hmm. and be kind of offended that you would what, what you're trying to say like my legs don't work you'd be like why would you get upset mm -hmm. at that no I don't do that like I know there's some guys I look at them and I say oh I am a loser as a husband he in there mm -hmm. with a whole uh, what is that the apron on that the chef hat sh cooking up lobster and steak I'm sitting there like looking around whole providence don't see it <laughs> cause I've been there boiling uh uh uh, blowing up hot dogs in the microwave because I don't know how to boil them right. And he's Chef Boardie over there cooking up everything. Yeah, baby, I'm going. You want some? You, you like the candy yams, right? I'm like, come on, sweetie, let's go. I don't feel right this house, <laughs> right? And then I had to say, man, skip that. I'm gonna be me. I'm not good at that stuff. But baby, I'll take you out to Millie's and get you some soul food if you want, right? And we'll do that and make that our day. But the point is, is she never required that of me. Yeah. And if watch this. What I'm supposed to do is if she loves that, I'm supposed to then say, okay, I'm gonna try to learn to do, cook one or two meals. You ain't gonna get two of, you ain't gonna be shrimp and lobster, but I'll try to figure out one meal and say, look, baby, I'm cooking your favorite. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. You gonna, you, gonna, you gonna figure a meal out? Praise the Lord, <laughs> we love everybody here today. <laughs> Glory to God, y'all gonna be seeing, what is the possible to burn this house down? So, <laughs> amen. Hopefully you got something out of it. We wanted to do a Q&A yeah. before we get into the boundaries. The boundaries are going to be good, all right? Um, they're going to hurt. They should, they should be tough to you. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking correctly, you're going to be saying, man, I got to do that, right? If you're thinking she got to do that or he has to do that, you're already losing. The boundaries are for you. Right. To know how far you can go and how what you should not do. It's not for your mate. Your mate can look at them too, but I'm not worried about what she does. That's her bucket. Everybody say that where you are. You can't, that's my, that's her bucket. That's his bucket. That's my spouse bucket. Amen. It's his bucket. Right. If it's my bucket, I'm staying right in it. Amen. Is if if she don't do it, that's between her and the Lord. And that's how you begin to to heal your relationships. We're going to end it there. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for everyone that is here. We want everyone to, uh, I pray that all of us will learn your boundaries, learn the boundaries of marriage, that we can then know what to do, that we won't go too far and feel like, or feel like we're too restricted. I can't ever do anything right. Something is always going on. Something is happening, right? Because once we establish the boundaries, then we can move freely mm -hmm. and not be afraid of going and injuring our mate. And Father, we pray even for the single folks who are looking at marriage, that as they're looking at it, they can begin to work and say, okay, I'm going to work on this. I want to begin to speak like this with, with the person that I'm dating and begin to function like that. So that way, when it's time to get married, It'll be a blessing. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen again. Amen.